Hi guys and welcome to another video. Today I am talking about the Cycle Frontier. Uh, I'm going to go over what it is, why you should know what this game is, because it is so bloody refreshing, and uh, I'll give it plenty of comparisons to Escape from Tarkov, other issues that I see with the game, positives, everything you need to know right here. So without further ado, let's crack straight into it. So what is the Cycle Frontier? So the Cycle Frontier is a PvPvE uh, instance-based game where if the instance is open for six hours, 20 people at a time can be inside there coming and going as they please. And it has the like same kind of mentality of an Escape from Tarkov game where you will be going in there, trying to get some items, trying to kill people and, and take their loot and get out so you can increase your quarters or your hideout and also increase your reputation with um, some of the factions. From there, you'll be able to get better gear and make yourself stronger in certain ways by having that gear and then being able to go back in. That is the whole cycle, Frontier. Now, it sounds very familiar to a game we've already been playing a lot if you're uh, regular to this channel. Um, but if you're not, it's a kind of, a, it's its own genre of first person shooter out there. A lot of games like uh, Battle Royale is very common these days or Call of Duty where you're going in rushing around trying to kill everyone or you're, you know, trying to be the last one alive. This game, and like games like Escape from Tarkov don't have that same feel to it because it's not about killing everyone. It's mostly about survival, but it's not just a survival game because you can go and kill everyone and, and do other stuff with it. So that is the summary of what Cycle Frontier is and the game format. Now we'll touch on the comparisons to Escape from Tarkov, um, but I'll be able to elaborate in more detail with each one. So it is a PvPvE game. So you go into the instance. The instance itself is a six hour window that you join in. Once you're exploring the map, uh, people will come and go throughout that six hours as they please. At the end of the six hours, a warning will pop up on the screen and say that you've got 30 minutes to get out uh, and then otherwise you will miss out. So there is plenty of opportunity to go and explore, kill stuff, get items and get out. And there's uh, some really good benefits from that. The one being you don't have to wait for other people to join the game. You literally just go, I'm ready to join. And you literally within seconds are inside a match, which is amazing. Something that uh, it's, it's just really refreshing for a new game. And with the PvPVE section of it, there are mobs in the game that are more simple to kill uh, from the little like striders all the way up to the big Bertha or uh, there's also a guy we, we all call Jeff, uh, which I don't even understand why, but we just call him Jeff. Then with the PvP side of things, there is up to three man squads for this game. So you could be running around as a solo. I've done of my 20 hours playing this so far. I've probably done about 18, 19 of it as solo and I just jumped into some duos with Red Ops uh, to check that out as well. So there is a secure container whilst you're going around looting. The secure container can be upgraded as you progress through the quarters upgrades or the hideout upgrades. Uh, it starts off as like five kilograms you can hold all the way up to 30 if it's fully upgraded. And that goes into the next point being if you die, you lose absolutely everything besides what is in that secure container. So uh, you can see the comparison right there for the looter shooter being Escape from Tarkov, where you have a secure container in that game. This one has one as well, and it works really well with how you progress. Try to get some quest items or something like that, and if you die, you still get to keep on to keep those items, or if you want to save some meds when you die, that gives you the option right there. It has tasks and faction, uh, faction rep, just like Escape from Tarkov as well. So you'll go to each of the three factions, you'll get a task from each one, and you'll level up uh, your faction rep with each one. As you level them up, you'll be able to purchase different items and also get more missions. So instead of at the start, you only get one easy mission. From later on, you'll be able to have a medium difficulty and a hard difficulty, which will give you more rep and currency. There is a hideout in this game as well. I call it the hideout, it's the quarters, and that is where you get your upgrades, your perks to make you able to do things better or to regenerate stuff faster and hold more storage. So there is the reason why you go in there to each mission or into each game you are searching around, trying to get your kills and get your items and get all that stuff so you can do your tasks. You also want to put items aside for your hideout or your quarters to be able to upgrade that. This is the opportunity to craft. So you don't just find all the best items in the game and you can't just buy all the best items from the faction leaders. You have to craft items as well. So from backpacks to armors to helmets, even some of the guns, you can craft them yourself and which means you need to go in and find those items to do the crafting. This is actually a really good opportunity for the fact that it's like the game is slowly going to have to increase the gear over time and it won't be just 
oh, you can just instantly get the best gear. The, the, the really good gear is really expensive to craft and it takes time to do it and it costs you money if you want to fast track it. So there's not going to be people that can just hold on to the best gear forever unless they're really good at the game and they don't die very often. And the last major comparison to a Escape from Tarkov that I wanted to chuck in there is there's jackets and there's keys. So you can loot keys to locked rooms and you'll be able to get uh, those special items or more unique items in those rooms, which is kind of cool. It gives you the opportunity to take in some keys and uh, check out some areas that you haven't checked out before and then hopefully be able to get the better gear from there. Now I want to talk about the positives of this game. So first up, it is free to play. Um, to my understanding, the monetization of this game will be based purely off cosmetics and you can play the game for free. There is no uh, cost to being able to purchase the game that I know of so far, um, but you'll be able to buy items and uh, but you'll be able to buy cosmetics to be able to look different within the game. And therefore that's how they'll monetize this game. And there won't be any like pay to win system. The next positive I really want to touch on is it is really nice to have a similar game to Escape from Tarkov out there. There's definitely room in the industry for a game like this. And it's going to be a very good gateway for either people that want to get into a more serious, like looter shooter, MMO kind of style game. Um, but, you know, don't want to dive straight in the deep end with a game like Escape from Tarkov that's so punishing. You can jump in this game and literally within minutes, you're already inside a match and you can just enjoy it. You don't need to watch 40 YouTube videos and hundreds of hours of in the game just to figure out where to escape, what items to take, what's worth holding on to, all that kind of stuff. So you can just go and have some straight up fun with your friends or by yourself and, um, you know, have that experience. However, it is still the same kind of punishing game where if you die, you lose stuff and that can be very frustrating, but that makes you feel. And I love games that make you feel and you can hear my passion about that because I love it when I go into a game and I'm like, holy crap, I need to get out of this game. My, I've got so much stuff on me, my heart's pumping. That's the, the feeling I like to get from a video game and not just some sort of like smacking trees in a MMO game where I've like hit the same type of trees for 18 hours straight just to go from level 74 lumbering up or logging up to like 86 like those kind of grind games like it, it's just a time sink this game will make you actually feel something by far the biggest thing about this game that just makes me so happy is the fact that i can literally die in this game be like god damn it i'm out i have to like put another loadout on to pressing tab chucking on a armor helmet backpack chucking some meds chuck on a gun chucking some ammo which literally can take you just 20 30 seconds and then you click ready and you're back into the next game and you're like 15 seconds later after you've loaded in you are straight up into the next game there is no lengthy loading times waiting for other players to match and trying to get all the people into the same map and all that kind of stuff all that stuff isn't re relevant because there is a consistent instance for six hours and uh, people just come and go as that happens so that is by far one of the most exciting things about this is so you don't have to waste, you know, 20 minutes or half an hour of your hour prepping your gear and getting into the next uh, battle. Because sometimes you just want to go and you want to have fun and shoot stuff. You don't want to be sitting there playing Tetris. So none of that stuff is really required because you can just jump, chuck on a, a, a gear set and load straight in. Now I'm trying to uh, put a list together of the negatives to this game and um, it's, it's actually been kind of tough. but. This is what uh, I've, I've been listening to people and, and looking at it from my perspective as well. And I know there are a lot of people complaining about how running around the map is a little bit too slow. I kind of just got used to bringing out my melee weapon and being able to run across a little bit faster. And you can traverse across the map quite quick, um, but you don't want this, the running speed to be too fast in this because then everyone would just swarm on every single gunfight too quickly. And I kind of like the idea that you don't get third party as often in this, you'd still do, but it's nowhere near as often as I would like, like as some other games like Apex Legends, for example. My biggest fear for this game is actually based around the end game. I, I can totally understand getting the better gear, upgrading your hideout or your, your quarters and um, getting your trader rep up. So you get, you know, the coolest and best guns in the game. But the biggest fear I have is what does the end game look like? I don't really know much about that. I tried to do a little bit of research. I didn't really find any. And um, hopefully they'll have a really solid end game because what will happen is you'll probably spend a couple of hundred hours grinding out, getting all that stuff sorted, getting all those upgrades done. And then you'll be like, what now? And so maybe they'll have instance based like events where like, you know, the uh, a, a new boss will be in there and you'll have to try and kill the boss and everyone will be fighting over it and stuff like that. 
Not exactly sure what the end game looks like, but I am worried that it, the, the replayability after a period of time will just kind of dry out um, just because there might not be enough to do after a while. But um, I don't think that's going to be too much of a problem, but we'll have to wait and see. The last negative is it is still in a beta phase and um, it will be going down unavailable to be played in a couple of weeks time and they're going to release it in 2022. Um, there is some issues with the game. There are some bugs with like movement. There's some uh, uh, places you get stuck. Hopefully that will all be fixed. And then um, in, when it does get released in 2022, we'll have a really exciting game to try out and play alongside games like Escape from Tarkov and people can really enjoy it there. So guys, I don't want to ramble on anymore. I just wanted to give you guys my thoughts about this game and make this game more aware. I actually think this game is really exciting and I think you guys should support it. Uh, I'm not sponsored for this video at all. There was no paid monetization or anything like that. Um, I asked them for a key. That was as far as it goes. And that's because, um, you know, I just wanted to get quicker access than waiting on Steam for the free access to the key. Um, but that's as far as it goes with my uh, affiliation with this company. And I just, I'm excited for a game. It was a lot of fun to play. I played it for 14 hours straight today. I played it for about eight hours straight the other day. So it's um, something you guys should check out if you're into these kind of games. And I don't think you'll be disappointed at all. If you did enjoy this video, make sure you like and comment for the YouTube algorithm. I am going to be posting more uh, the Cycle Frontier videos over the next couple of days, just so you guys can see some of the PvP action. I'll do like more of a montage video of PvP action. And I'll also do some long format where it's like, you'll actually see me kill like four players plus in, a, uh, in an instance. And you hopefully will be able to see what the game kind of plays out like over that period of time. So uh, if you want to check out that kind of stuff or you want to, want to see more of this kind of footage, make sure you subscribe, notification bell to keep up to date. And uh, if you want to see me live streaming, I do stream on Twitch every day of the week. So go down to the link below, give me a follow over there and I will be uh, playing this game a fair bit over the closed beta. All right, guys. So lastly, I'll see you next time.